Welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Awaken Your Rhythm, the seven week journey to encourage whole body healing through drumming, including stress reduction, release of negative feelings and improved immunity. This is Nadira Ade, and it is my pleasure to be hosting this hour long Q&A call for the Shift Network, where we will explore the teachings of Christine Stevens and address questions about her upcoming seven week course, Awaken Your Rhythm, which begins next Tuesday, March 12th. Later, I will explain how you can participate in this course, even if you can't attend the live sessions. But first, I want to introduce our special guest. Christine Stevens is an internationally acclaimed speaker, author, and music therapist. Holding master's degrees in both social work and music therapy, Christine inspires people all over the world with her message that music promotes holistic health, spirituality, and wellness. Christine is the founder of Upbeat Drum Circles, offering diversity trainings, team building, and wellness presentations worldwide. She's trained facilitators and led workshops in more than 20 countries, including Iraq and Hong Kong, South Africa, Japan, and Western Europe. A leader in the music and wellness movement, Christine also serves on the editorial board of Explore, a journal of science and healing. Um, so in just a few moments, we're going to open up for questions, but first I want to welcome Christine, who will begin our call by leading us in an opening drumming practice. Welcome to the call, Christine. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, I'm going to take a minute to open with hand on heart, always connecting to the inner drum, taking a deep breath. And just reminding ourselves that we, whether you're holding a drum or you're not, you always have this inner heartbeat drum. It is the, what, the impulse of creativity in you. And so aligning with that, realigning and retuning ourselves because the human body is an instrument. So coming back into that alignment with a good deep breath and just taking that heartbeat love and appreciation, putting it on the drum. always good to bless and connect to the drum and the sound I'm using right now is the sound of air, the breath. Sometimes when we drum we hold our breath so remembering to take a good breath while you play and coming back to your heart. Well I just thought that with the auspicious timing of this call, we just had the new moon, we just had Mardi Gras, and tomorrow is International Women's Day, that I would just offer a couple of rhythms to offer the connection for women, empowerment, women's empowerment, and also the energy of samba, which is a street parade rhythm in Brazil that celebrates Mardi Gras. And I've always loved these rhythms. World rhythms are such a powerful way to connect to the global consciousness, that we really are part of all one that we consciousness that comes through these rhythms. So you don't have to have a drum, even if you can use your body percussion or drum on your desk. If you've got a uh, low and high sound is the key thing on your body, that might be your belly and your chest. So you can have a low and high because in the drum, we have a lot of the bass and the top or the fire, the earth and the fire. So I thought I would demonstrate, and you can speak these rhythms as well. First of all, we'll start with the rhythm of Mardi Gras and connect to your own intention for the new moon, this new time. And this is a celebration rhythm. It's a parade rhythm. It's done with an ensemble. It's a great metaphor of moving forward in your life because rhythm is defined as the element of music pertaining to forward motion. So we'll move forward with the street rhythm, the street parade rhythm called Samba. And the first part is just three beats in the center. Doom, doom, doom. You can play that on your body percussion, anything you have around you. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. Awesome. The second part is ta, 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 ta. 
It has a cool syncopation. taking that great energy and the second rhythm that I want to share on this great live call is a rhythm for women's empowerment and acknowledgement of tomorrow's International Women's Day. And that rhythm is a Middle Eastern belly dancing rhythm called Beladi. And it honors the hip movements of women's dancing, which when you notice that style of Middle Eastern belly dancing, the hips are forming the infinity line so dancing that figure eight of infinity connection it's connecting to your infinite power in this moment of ashe and this rhythm from the middle eastern tradition oh if you actually play on my correct drum my doom back which i brought such a pretty drum So we're going to use the rest of our time. Thank you very much for doing that. Now I'm all vibrating. <laughs> we're going to use the rest of our time together to dive into the questions for Christine as we prepare for her upcoming course, Awaken Your Rhythm, which again begins next Tuesday, March 12th. If at any time during this call you want to learn more about this seven-week course, please visit Awaken Your Rhythm to see the full description. And now we're going to get started with the questions. Um, so first, if you have any questions for our customer service department, you can contact our outstanding customer support team directly at support.theshiftnetwork.com. And if you have a question for Christine and you're watching over video or listening over the webcast, you can type your questions in and I'm happy to share them with her. Our first question, which you already touched on a little bit, but I'm going to offer it just one more time. What should people do if they don't have a drum? First of all, everyone does have a drum. You consider that your heart, your inner drum, you're alive, you have that heart. So all we're doing is connecting to that rhythm that's within us and bringing it out through an instrument of the drum. 
But beginning by recognizing that, oh yeah, I do have this drum. And in fact, this is the first instrument that we heard when we were in the room for five months. The auditory system is already developed and we're listening to that pulse. So before we even are born, it's a powerful thing to think about. We were all incubated in rhythm. And so connecting to that rhythm of your heart and it's great to go on the journey of finding your drum. I'll share a little bit about mine, but also there's a, a great drum I'll show you. The five gallon water bottle jug. Now this is great when you just take a Sharpie, decorate it up, and it's amazing how good these sound. And I just added a a nice folder on mine, and I put some positive affirmation words around the edge, yeah, which works well for water as well. But you can play this drum so many different ways. So if you've got a water jug, you can come to class. There's nothing stopping the rhythm. Now, a lot of people have seen the bucket drumming happen in like the streets when people are just taking a bucket and they're banging away on the street. So this is, cool. this is a cool option. You just take a bucket and I'm going to offer these on my blog as to um, suggestions and you can hand me that head right there. So you can get one of these. Remo made a, a bucket drum head and I really love to recommend Remo drums because they're vegetarian, vegan, and made in America. And you can actually sterilize them, clean them, wash them, and they won't change pitch in different climates or weather. So this just snaps on any bucket. Amazing. So you can take a bucket, put a drum head on it. And there's a lot of great techniques that go with this. Fun. Sorry about that. I think that the fun of percussion is that even when you have a mallet, which I love different kinds of mallets, um, because just having this a mallet or a stick, you can use chopsticks, you can start to drum on pretty much anything. But I'll share with you the, the story of my first drum. I actually purchased this drum not knowing why I was called to the drum whatsoever. I saw this in a store in Utah in Salt Lake City. It's a beautifully painted high drum and woven in the back with sinew. And a friend of mine made this mallet for me with horse hair. Often the shamans are connected to the horse in terms of the vision of riding your drum to different realms. And I love what, I love to decorate this drum. I added some charms from different places I've been teaching, different ceremonies I've attended. And I actually, when I went on a vision quest, I, my drum went on the vision quest with me. And I have a, a carry in my drum case, a uh, very sacred stone that I found at the end of that vision quest in the desert. And I feel like this drum is my partner in my spiritual practice, in like staying alive and excited and happy and in tune and connected. So the search for the drum, sometimes the drum finds you. And I'm glad I stepped into it. I probably had this drum for six years before I really ever played it. It was, it was seeding my future. Um, the other drum I want to share in the topic of what drum to use that I recommend, it's great, is these frame drums. Now frame drums were believed to be invented by women from the grain sieve. Thanks to the great work of Wayne Redman, who book when the drummers were women. And this is a very affordable Remo frame drum and fiber skin head, so it's synthetic and recycled material. No trees are chopped down for these drums. Very lightweight, and I'll let you hear how it sounds. So the last part of my answer, long answer, it's a great question, 
is a, a very remarkable drum that came to me as a gift when I did peace work in northern Iraq, bringing together the warring tribes through drum circles. And this drum was gifted to me. It's quite unique. It's called a DAF, D-A-F. It's a 22-inch drum played by the Sufis. On the inside are rings, jingles. And on the outside, it's a beautiful woman and a poem from Rumi. And the poem from Rumi is on the, painted on here that says, there is no greater sound than love the energy that encircles the universe forever. So when this was gifted to me, they said, always play this drum with love in your heart. So that's my long answer to what to do if you don't have a drum is first, remember that you do. Second, consider creating a drum with everything from buckets to water jugs to hollowed out bamboo log drums. And thirdly, be open to a drum that might want to come into your life. Thank you. That was a beautiful that answer. Was a beautiful answer. So the next question um, is from Fresca, who says, how long do you have to do the drumming to feel a difference? And how long do you recommend doing it every day? Is it similar to practicing an instrument? This is a great opportunity to make a paradigm shift that we're not practicing an instrument, we're, the instrument is our practice. Because I think a lot of us are survivors of piano lessons and we had that experience of practicing music and feeling like we couldn't get it or being frustrated and the drum helps people break through all of that history or messages that we sometimes carry. And it's such a tool of creative freedom. But there is a specific answer to that question. And I focus group tested individuals who'd never drummed before. And what I witnessed was in four minutes of staying with the beat, their shoulders relaxed and their breathing changed. So, you know, when we talk about spirituality and health, we talk about mind, body, and spirit. And I saw the physical shifts in four minutes. And that was a reminder to me that sometimes if you can't learn a beat right away and you put it down and you say, I couldn't do it, it takes four minutes to even fall into a groove. So we have to practice that beautiful self-patience with ourselves. <laughs> and secondly, I've always been interested in that question as well. And when I teach at Shambhala Mountain Retreat Center, it's a Buddhist um, retreat center, many of their practices are 22 minutes. So I've been practicing the experience of drumming for 22 minutes. And that also has a very deepening practice. And the other part of your question is it's not just the playing of the drum. It's the silence that it affords in, in the closing of the notes. So you want to tack on the time of allowing yourself to integrate when you stop drumming. Like you said about, oh, I feel all the vibes. Like, yeah, that's the sort of juicy upload time where we get to just bathe in that solid, that sort of sense of stillness because the rhythm is a polarity to stillness, sound and silence. And so we step into that silence and we just feel so grounded and happy and we feel the anchoring of all the rhythms that are still alive in our cells because the body is wired for rhythm. So that's my answer to your question. And it also reminded me of an interesting personal experience when I do this practice called a chila, which is going alone into a cave and drumming for an entire day. And I've been doing this practice for a number of years now. I do one day a year, and once I did 40 days straight. And I can tell you that the repetition of the drum and being away from all the stimulation of computers and all the other rhythms and stimulus that is in our lives that we might call the noise of life. What happened for me is in the duration of the drumming, I hit a little moment of boredom and just past that, like a breaker in the waves of the ocean, just past that, 
like everything shifted and I heard the silence more than the beats and the silence kept getting longer and longer. And that's why we say in this course, one of the great benefits is the meditative effect because it's a rhythm mantra. So that's my answer is the four minutes gets you there. The 22 minutes is a beautiful way to stay in it and don't think of yourself as practicing because we fall into that student crisis mode. Think of yourself as absorbing this and leave time for the space at the end. Thank you. Um, and we, I'm sure everybody is looking forward to learning more about all of that during the course. For those of you who are curious to learn more about the seven week journey ahead with Christine, um, you can visit awakenyourrhythm.com. And we've got another question coming in before I deliver this one. Um, I'm going to mention that this is about the course, but it's more a logistical question. So I'm not offering it to Christine. I'm going to answer it. Um, this is a question from someone who lives in Ireland and is wondering if they can um, participate in the course if they aren't able to attend live. Um, it looks like their name is Kriya. And I hope that we will hear that you did join the course. Um, the specific question is, would I be able to download the videos? So all of the recordings, audio and um, video are always available on your course homepage. You're welcome to download them. You can participate in the course live if it works for your schedule. But if you are unable to, you can always participate by listening to the recordings after the fact and then um, participating in the course community group, which we have on Facebook and uh, joining in the community in other ways. So that's the answer to that question. Um, the next question that I'm going to offer to you, Christine, is from Nan, who says, in taking this class, is it possible to learn how to do short drumming pieces for various issues that we may be facing or would like assistance with, such as navigating uh, sleep issues or dealing with upsetting news? Yes. And one of the powerful things about Awaken Your Rhythm and the design of this is a very different approach to drumming because you are the composer of the rhythms. And I'll be showing you these three keys to creating those healing rhythms for yourself. And we're going to practice in the course how to create those rhythms and have the opportunity to share them. And I think this is one of the most powerful things as we're learning about individualized medicine is that there's a wisdom inside each of us that we want to listen more deeply to and then express that. So what we do is we combine intention. Like if the intention is get a good night's sleep, that's a great intention. And if you take that into how do I hold the drum in a way that reflects that feeling? And then the third piece, how do I play the drum in a way that reflects that experience, not as a begging for it to happen, but coming from a place of affirmation. I've been a, a student of Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith for many years at Agape International Spiritual Center, and we do affirmative prayer, and I love affirmative drumming. So I'll demonstrate how I might play that rhythm, but this would be your rhythm to create, but how I would create that is that I would maybe hold my drum in a, like a lullaby position, hand on heart, feeling into that surrendering to sleep and putting something soft onto the drum. And then I might need to do, it just came to me to feel like letting go of stuff that gets in the way of a good night's sleep is just this releasing move on the drum, which is great. You're just brushing away. So releasing, I can feel the anxiety or the challenges of the day that I'm holding on to. And I'm releasing them. I think one powerful thing about the drum is the ability to do purification practices and releasing because there's feelings and emotions that we carry that there's no words for. And the drum is a, a language. Um, it really is a way to express and release feelings. 
So my answer is absolutely. And, and it's powerful to carry this drum techniques, these awakening your rhythms techniques. You know, it might even be you want to drum something for a friend. One thing that is really fun is if you have a celebration, somebody's a birthday or an anniversary, is I get that person in the middle and we drum the number of beats of their years and have them sit and close their eyes and just feel, you know, the, the beauty of each year that has occurred. And we rise in tempo and we rise in volume to the celebration of their life. So the drum has always been part of these transitions whether it's sleeping and waking, birthing and deathing, you know, I mean, all of these have been the history of drumming. So it's a great question. And the answer is absolutely yes. The reason I like to teach some rhythms, like we'll learn a trance rhythm and some world rhythms is because they give you a rhythmic vocabulary and a comfortability with the creation of your rhythms. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is from Aliyah, who says, what are examples of drumming the four elements? Ah, yes. The four elements have a connection to the drum sounds. And I love this about the drum because I'm a survivor of piano lessons, like many of us, and the piano is lots of keys, which meant, I think, 188 keys. I always thought I could make 187 possible mistakes. So in the drum, to talk about the connection of nature, the earth, is to identify sounds that connect us to those elements. Now, this tradition comes from the Sufis in the Nubian area of Hamza and al-Din and through Lane Redman. And I also incorporated my learning with the Lakota and Navajo tribes, Diné tribes here in California area, South Dakota and New Mexico. And I love using this as the earth sound, the bounce in the center, the water, falling a water drop, the air, And fire. One. So I'll just take a minute and play a little bit how I combine these elements. The consciousness part is to think about what element do I need right now? Do I need some fire in my life, some earth, some air, some water? And then let that be the anchor of your pattern. So I'll just use me for an example in the new moon. I thought a lot about the excitement I'm feeling about the Shift Network course, and that's the fire sound. So I'd start my rhythm. I'll just stop talking and play the drum now. I'll talk through the drum. <laughs> Great question. That was beautiful. Um, I'm going to, <laughs> I keep trancing with the drumming. Um, I noticed that I want to just drift along. <laughs> so let me remind anyone else who's listening and trancing with the drumming that at any point, you are welcome to go online to awakenyourrhythm.com where you can read a detailed description of each of the seven modules that are planned for this course, which is going to be starting next week, Tuesday on March 12th. The next question um, that I am offering you is from Eve, who says, I've enjoyed drumming in the past, but my hand, wrists, and fingers are sore when I've recently tried due to arthritis. Are there ways for people with these conditions to continue playing? Yes. 
And one thing it, it really important is learning to stretch before drumming. And I use rotations, wrist rotations. I use pain creams that are really helpful. Magnet bracelets help as well. Um, and the other key is how you hold the drum. So check out whether it's the playing of the drum or the holding of the drum. So what I've done as a music therapist is found different adaptive tools, even the bucket drums and using sticks can sometimes be easier on our wrists. And it's also fun to explore ways of how this can benefit arthritis in terms of the, the extension of the, the releasing of pain, I should say, through the creative expression and the joy that you find in connecting to rhythm. So it's one of those thresholds to explore and find what works for you. I was thinking of a case where I had a person who um, had a, a Parkinson's shake. And so what I discovered was we put the drum up on a stand. We used a plant stand and we put the drum up on the stand. And when she stood and danced while drumming, it reduced the shuffle, the shaking and also reduced pain. We have a study that's going on right now with chronic fatigue and the different pain perceived pain. And certainly there's been a lot of research showing that drumming can reduce pain. So I think it would be a worthwhile exploration to work on where you can adapt and try different things and always make sure you're breathing. Sometimes I think it's the breathing that we sort of hold our breath when we're drumming and we sort of bend over the drum sometimes. So just taking that break. And also the practice that I showed you about the air is so good for your hand is just to put your hand on the drum and sweep. If you have pain in your dominant hand and you're thinking, well, I could never drum in the non-dominant hand, it's absolutely great to try switching hands, switching sides of the brain. So that's another, can be one of those things where you look at the crisis and find the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the next question, you've touched a bit on drumming um, as a way to support or navigate emotions, um, but this one has come through from several people, so I want to offer it to you. Uh, Linda, Rachel, and Rita have all asked if you have any recommendations for a drum practice for grief. Mm. Yes. So I'm going to answer that on my drum first, and I'll use my words, because it's one of the tools that we can use with drumming is, we call it inspirational beats or percussion discussion is actually answering on your drum. So here's my answer to that question. So what I was saying is, uh, in my own journey with grief, it feels like it comes in waves and it hits hard when it first tr gets triggered or arises. And then we sort of find our way through that wave of grief and then another wave comes and we find our way through it and they kind of dissipate and then another wave comes. So one of the tools of drumming is this idea of emotional release or shadow drumming. I sometimes call it, which is the drum is strong enough to hold our emotions. In my work as a music therapist, I've done a lot of work with bereavement and hospice and grief programs. And in my own journey, having lost my mother when she was 64 to ovarian cancer, and it was funny, the universe kept handing me gigs 
with bereavement camps and hospice camps, I was like, okay, I get it. I'm here to work through my issues and help others as well. And one of the questions I would ask people is, what do you wish you could have said to your loved one that you didn't get a chance to say? Say it on your drum. Send it in a message through your drum. Or I would ask, what's been something that's given you a relief from emotion and sadness? What's something that has become more important? What is one way you've changed through your loss? And answer that on the drum. What happens, even just me demonstrating that with you, I didn't know what I was going to play. But when we don't think and we allow, we short circuit the, to the talking it away. And one thing that's interesting is when we perseverate and we tell the same story over and over, that something happens and we just put it through the sound. And it has to happen fast. You know, that quote that says, dance first, think later, that's the natural order. So you just put that emotion out through the drum and then you can take a breath and go, what was I just saying? Oh, I now I know what the drum was showing me. This is a great biofeedback method. So in this course, Awaken Your Rhythm, and what, the way I work in this very different approach is to help people find their own rhythmic voice for grief, for whatever you're facing. Um, there's certainly been a lot for me of grieving for the earth. So a quick story about that, when we had a fire near my area where I lived in Los Angeles, northern Los Angeles years ago, my teacher Kathy Hall and I went outside, when we took our drums, and we drummed to the earth, and we let out our grief, and we were wailing, and we were drumming. And we held the drums like this, so horizontally holding the drum, because the sound, the vibration of the drum comes through the mouth, so the, the sound was going down into the earth, not like this going up, but down to the earth. And we just created a ritual of drumming our grief and our love to the earth, the regeneration that comes through tears that are moist and offer new beginnings. And I just always say, express it, man. I mean, our culture is not good at grief, and it's so good to express it. The last thing I'll say about that is it feels sometimes weird to be alone, although I can think of one really big grief explosion in my life where I drove to a canyon and just played my drum really loud for a while. And what I remember is when I finished playing, I did feel a shift in my physiology, like my body felt free, um, releasing that energy. So when we step into the emotion, it's always amazing to me how we can stand on the other side of that and go, you know, we're sort of afraid to step into the depths of it, but it actually creates a release and it's the only way through. And it's just to say that in your own journey, as we say with grief, everybody's path is their unique path and it's the same with rhythm. And if you feel alone with it, although when we're drumming in nature, we're not alone at all, but if you feel alone with it, it's great to put on a track. There's some music that comes with the course as a bonus. And I made these tracks seven minutes long because I had studied the four minute rule that it takes people four minutes to fall in. So take one of these play along tracks and play along and just set the intention that I'm going to just let go of my emotions. Don't even need to know what they are. I don't even need to know what's going to come out. It's we're so, we're so uncomfortable standing in that place of mystery. But when we go through that place, we access what's that wisdom in our bodies, our minds and our spirits that comes through the rhythm. Thank you. Great question. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is from Nancy, who says, will the beats be written out for us to use when we are on our own? And I'll add an additional, if, if they won't be, then what is the way that participants will be able to keep track of the beats that they're learning? Yes to both. They're written out, but not in a way of musical notation. Here, I have a couple of cards right here. <laughs> so I, I write them out in ways that are very empowering with the binary system of play, don't play, right? When you think about rhythm, it's really binary. It's like dot or line. So we'll be learning how to read that, but more importantly, you'll have audio tracks and video tracks. And I encourage people to bring a tool of their own recording to the calls. So I use my 
voice memo on my smartphone, iPhone, because when you're in the call and you create something in your own rhythm, you want to record yourself so you can remember it. The drum helps us develop our sense of listening and our attunement to rhythm. And that's why I included a lot of bonus music where you can start to attune to rhythm through your physio physiological body moving to the beat and through just perceiving it and listening. So you can learn through listening. It'll be written out in a binary kind of form. And I'll show you how to write your own rhythms as well. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is a very short and straightforward one from Natalie, who says, what size is the frame drum you're using? This one is 14 inches. The other frame drum that I, I really like to play and I carry it with me a lot is the 10 inch frame drum that I designed this drum with Remo when we created the healing drum kit. And I decorated it by writing the words of the Peace Pole. Have you guys heard of the Peace Pole? It's a beautiful project that started in Japan after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And it says, may peace prevail on earth. And I wrote it in four or five languages because I always say that my drum is my Peace Pole. So yeah, it's a 14 inch frame drum. And just to continue to say, personalize your drum, you know, make it your own. These were just silver Sharpies. So there's a lot of fun ways that you can decorate the drum. Thank you very much. And if you're just joining us, we are here with Christine Stevens learning about her upcoming course, Awaken Your Rhythm, which begins next week on Tuesday, March 12th. So please be sure to log on to awakenyourrhythm.com for all of the details and to register. And then the next question I have is, let's see, from, um, who is this? I'm not seeing a name, but there's a question that's come through that um, drumming can be like an aerobic practice. And so can you speak a little bit more about that? Sure. One thing that we studied when I was working at Health Rhythms with Dr. Barry Bittman and Remo Drum Company is we did a study to look at how drumming is a form of physical fitness. And it's interesting that it was the same metabolic units burned as an inclined bicycle. Now that study was done with a djembe, so people were drumming with alternating hands left and right, which you can also do with a frame drum in the free freestyle that I'll be showing you. But I think there's something about the movement, the back and forth movement of our hands. And you know, there's this famous study that found that the, the profession that has the best cardiac health is conductors because their hands are above their hearts. <laughs> So, um, I've always noticed that I'm hungry after I drum. And then when we did that study and discovered that in fact, the metabolic units burned was equal, three minutes of hand drumming was equal to three minutes on an inclined bicycle. I said, all right, well that makes so much sense because that explains why I'm hungry. <laughs> the other side note about this being aerobic is that Studies have shown that when we move and we're exercising to rhythm so that we're in training with the beat, it takes 15% less effort. And I'm a graduate. I did, got my master's degree at the entrainment lab at Colorado State University with Dr. Michael Tout. So I did a lot of this, helped a lot in this research, looking at entrainment and how it happens in the brain. But really what's happening is you get that auditory signal and it's a driver for your, mus your muscles in your whole body system, just like dancing. It would be hard to dance for an hour if we didn't have the beat going. So I think the same thing happens. I've, I noticed when I worked in long-term care, individuals that would usually couldn't walk very far, somehow were able to get a good workout, even in, a, in, in whatever you know, non-ambulatory situation, in a wheelchair, et cetera, they could really get a workout by drumming because I think it does have that way of reducing our effort and allowing us to sustain the exercise longer. Thank you very much. 
Um, and you did address this earlier in the call when you were showing all of your really beautiful drums, but we've got a few questions that have been coming in about it. So can you just go over uh, the drum that you recommend if people are going to look for a drum and say a little bit more about why that's your drum of choice? Sure. The drum that I most have been recommending to people is the 14 or 16 inch frame drum. The one that I prefer is Remo Drum Company because they are made in America. They're, um, because they're synthetic, no animals or trees are used to create these. And the great thing about them is they hold their pitch. So here's the 14 inch. I like the size of it in sound. I'll demo each recommendation. Some of these you can sing into them and they echo back your voice. It's a powerful toning chamber. We'll be learning this in the course. drum I recommend, let me just grab it for you guys, is the Remo 16 inch Buffalo drum. I picked all of these because they're very affordable and I really recommend getting them from a company called West Music because they have 12 music therapists working there and they ship all over the world. So this is a Buffalo drum. So this is a style where it's woven in the back so I can hold it very comfortably in one hand, and now we get this almost gong-like sustain. And what we're learning is there's a sweet spot in the buffalo drum playing, it's not in the center, it's a little bit off-center, it really resonates. So this is a very creative drum, they took a Bahia head of a marching percussion drum from Brazil and put it onto a buffalo drum style. So I think it's really capturing more of that kind of a darker, sustaining, strong, really strong. I think this would be like a buffalo hide or deer hide style, but synthetic. Um, they also make another drum that's 16 inch that I know my Friends that do shamanic drumming really love this drum. It looks like this, sounds like this. A little bit higher sound. You can also paint these, they're such a great canvas. It's beautiful. I like to carry a mallet drum and a hand drum, frame drum. And then the third kind of category of drums is body drums or goblet drums. So then you get into, I'm actually sitting on a cajon, which is a drum box drum, very popular right now, or the doombeck, which is this goblet shaped drum. And these are usually imported from Turkey. This one is also from Remo or from yeah, Istanbul is a great place to get them or Egypt. But this drum you play across your lap, and it sounds like this. You hear the earth and the fire. And the Drums that have, are just a drum head, which you can put on the buckets. You know, those are also Remo drum heads. If you want a larger drum, I'll show you the 16 inch frame drum. There's two ways to play this. You can play it on your lap, or you can hold the bottom has a thumb spot, like a little indentation where you put your thumb to hold it. 
And when I first was learning, just the first day of learning how to play the drum, I just walked around holding it, just getting comfortable even holding it. The cool thing about the frame drum is you're holding it so the mouth of the drum is coming right into your body. So you get this blessing, you get this vibration right over your heart. And this is the, the drum that's really ancient, really coming from Tigris Euphrates, from the birthplace of civilization, from the women's tradition. As we get ready for Women's International Women's Day and the new moon, I wanted to just call out to the early knowledge we have about drumming and women from Lane Redman that women were the first drummers. And the, Mickey Hart, a great mentor of mine, wrote in his book, Drumming at the Edge of Magic, that the first drummer whose name we know is Lipashu, who drummed in the Temple of the Moon. Thank you. So we're going to have time for one or two more questions. And before we take those, I just want to mention um, Awaken Your Rhythm once more. This is going to be an extraordinary seven week journey under Christine's inspiring guidance, where you will have a chance to discover drumming as meditation and practice falling deeply into your heart. The seven week course takes place on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific starting Tuesday, March 12th. And if for any reason you cannot join us live, you won't miss the teachings. You will receive replays, transcripts and course handouts via your course homepage. Also, I'd like to remind you that we offer a no risk money back guarantee on our courses, giving a full two weeks until March 26th in this case to make sure you absolutely love it. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect via a private Facebook community group so you can stay connected with one another. So everyone who registers for this course will receive Awaken Your Inner Music, which is a guided audio practice from Christine, and then Drum Reviving Rhythms, which is the full play along audio album from Christine also, and then The Science of Drumming, a video teaching with companion PDF from Christine. And then Christine, can you speak a little bit more about what you are uh, most looking forward to sharing or any final thoughts as we're starting to draw to a close? Well, I want, I've really enjoyed meeting you, Nadira. Thank you for interviewing me and being on this Facebook live call. I'm really excited to bring this drumming class to shift network. It's really is time to awaken our rhythm. I think drumming has a role to play in consciousness, in evolutionary consciousness, because it's an evolutionary driver. It bonds us in a way that, as I said, and I worked in war zones and it made harmony of enemies and it is for self care. It is for connecting to the earth. It's for creativity and it's a language that's being spoken all over the world. So we're just catching up. <laughs> and I love what you said about this opportunity to deepen into your own heart rhythm. That was beautifully said. Um, I had the chance to work with a great cardiologist, Mimi Grieri, and she's a big fan of drumming. And she always said to her heart patients, you know, you need to get a drum. <laughs> so I wanted to honor um, you for being with me on this call. And I love your name. So if you take your name, Nadira Ade, that is a rhythm. So one of the first rhythms we can find is our name rhythms. So this is Nadira Ade. Nadira Ade. Thank you. 
You're going to make me cry. <laughs> um, for the final question, um, I'm going to ask. I'm really all in my heart right now. Thank you. <laughs> um, the last question is from Carol, who says, can drumming clear evil directed at us? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, I say that with, with a little bit like I'm always concerned about in the spiritual situation we're in that sometimes people say this works for everything. It doesn't work for everything. I mean, you know, some people it doesn't help, but I think if you believe that the vibration of the drum is going to reflect the intention you put in, I have definitely cleared energies around me with the drum because it's a sonic smudge, right? And so we used, we used to call it the car wash. It's like two people stand with their drums facing me and play and play down around my body. Boy, that can cleanse anything out. Um, I once worked with my teacher, my Lakota teacher, Uncle Manny Eagle Elk Council Pipe Sandoval, and he was called to bring the powwow drum to a neighborhood where there'd been multiple episodes of violence and thefts. And so he was asked to bring the drum to that neighborhood and just play and sing. And of course, it reduced the crime. <laughs> then there was one time he was called to go to a, a clothing store in Los Angeles to do the same thing. And it was really interesting to go with him into this corporation and carry this powwow drum and singing and drumming. And so I have seen this happen to where not only with our personal energy, but I think the drum is a tool for blessing spaces, for clearing energy, and really for singing to the earth, drumming with the earth and to the earth. And that's a really important energy connection that can clear a lot of things for us. Thank you very much. This has been a wonderful, informative, beautiful hour with you, Christine. I'm really appreciative and I'm so glad I was able to support you on the call. So I want to thank you personally and then thank everyone for being with us and to Christine for sharing your wisdom and your teachings with all of us today. Awaken Your Rhythm starts next week, Tuesday, March 12th. And again, please visit awaken, awakenyourrhythm.com to learn more or to register. Um, Christine, do you want to say any final words before we come to a conclusion? Well, yes, I just can't say enough about, you know, this is the time to be part of this movement. This is a very large global movement, this current of uh, rhythm for healing, celebration, mantra of relaxation and meditation and shifting our whole body wellness. And I think that the course that is designed through me, I feel very, um, very humbled by the opportunity to bring this here because I represent a very long lineage of my teachers from so many different cultures. And it's really old uh, practice of humanity. And I think it's coming back into this time where we need ancient wisdom and new consciousness. So be part of it. I really invite you. I call you and I believe the drum is calling you more strong voice than me is the drums voice. So it can bring so many gifts into your life and to the lives of others that you connect with through the drum. So just make it happen. You know, this is the time. This is the hero's journey. It's the time. If you were ever told you weren't musical, let's heal that. If you're ever told you weren't rhythmical, let's heal that. If you want to be part of changing humanity, let's do that. Ashe. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who has joined us on the call today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you in this course or in another one in the future. Take care. Mm -hmm.